Welcome my friends, I'm so glad you are here. Because a few weeks ago I had this problem. I was looking for a new monitor and I wanted to know which is the best bang for buck pro editing monitor. Monitor that is meant for editing, you know, the colors are accurate, it's 4K, good resolution. What is the best one out there? Like, I, I don't want to spend another grand or something for just the monitor, so what options are there? And I believe I found the perfect option. And then looking around and doing some more research, I am certain that this is the best bang for buck pro editing monitor for creators. And that monitor is this one over here behind me, this one in the middle, as you can see that one over here, no, this one over here, no, this one over here. This is that monitor. And this monitor is called the BenQ PD3200U monitor. So this is how this video is going to be. First of all, I'm going to explain why I think this is the best bang for buck and why this slots exactly in that category and what is the pro editing monitor? Because you can get a monitor that is 4K that is much cheaper, but what I wouldn't call a pro, okay? So first of all, I'm gonna explain why I think this is the best bang for buck. Second of all, we're gonna look at some of the specs of this one. So what can this monitor actually do? And then third of all, the most important thing is my experience with that monitor. I wanna share like how good this monitor is, some of the good sides and bad sides, so you can have a non-biased view of why this monitor could be the best bang for buck editing monitor for creators who are doing video editing or photo editing. So first of all, let's address the pro kind of label. So what is a pro monitor? I would consider a pro monitor a monitor that is actually made by the manufacturer for creators, okay? You can say that 4K is professional, you can say that, you know, some kind of technology is professional, but if it's not meant for creators like you and me in the mind, it is not meant for professional use, okay? So this professional category, what I would call this monitor, is that it's got pre-calibrated kind of monitor colors from the factory. It's 100% sRGB or Rec. 709. It's got 10-bit color. It's actually just meant for creators, okay? It's got some of the pro features, and this is what I mean by the pro monitor, okay? Now, second of all, I'd like to address why I think this is the best bang for buck, which mostly becomes because of the price, okay? If you're a gamer, this is not for you at all, okay? This is a complete waste of time. If you're a gamer, do not buy this monitor. But if you're a video creator, photo editor, someone who does content creation online, any form of video, animation, or photo, then this is the best option for you. Let me explain. So first of all, this monitor comes in at, let me check, $699. And you're thinking, whoa, that is very, very expensive. Okay, let's look at the competition and then you'll see very quickly how this is the cheapest option out there. So if we're going to look at something from even BenQ that is meant for video editing, what BenQ says this is for video editing, which is the BenQ PV3200 PT monitor, and that is a 32 inch monitor, okay? That monitor is basically exactly the same specs as this one behind me, but costs almost double the price. The only difference is there are some more different color modes and color gamuts that you can choose, and the Delta E is a little bit smaller, and that's basically it, but it's double the price, so I'm gonna rule that one out. Next up, let's look at ViewSonic. ViewSonic has a monitor called VP3268 4K. So it's a 32 inch monitor, pretty similar specs as this one, and that costs $900. Okay, more expensive. Asus PA32 8Q, the same thing, $900, $899 by the way. Much more expensive, very similar specs, similar type of category, but it's much more expensive. Next look at Dell. Dell provides a professional monitor called UP3216Q, which is $1,600. Now that is expensive, okay? Then we'll look at HP Z32, the same thing, $884. Lenovo ThinkVision P32U, the same thing, $1,200. So as you can see, this $699 monitor is actually lowest of the price but provides some absolutely killer features that even some of these 
other monitors don't have. So let's talk about now these features. As you can see, this is the lowest in the price category. So let's have a look at them. This monitor is actually quite an old model. I think it's from 2017 or something like that, which you think, wow, it's quite an old model. That's why you probably see a little bit of bigger bezels. And that's why, you know, some of the features might not look like up to date, but actual under the hood, it's amazing. If you're not interested in the specs, you know, kind of tap the right side of the screen and just skip through this. But I think it's very important to know what this monitor can do. So under the hood, what this monitor is, is a 4K 3840 times 2160 IPS panel. So it's LED backlight, 16 by nine aspect ratio, and it's matte coated for better viewing angles and less glare or less reflections from the monitor. The monitor, because of the high resolution, the pixel per inch is 137.68. Contrast is 1000 to one contrast ratio. Brightness is 350 lumens. Response time and refresh rate is four milliseconds and 60 Hertz. If you're a gamer, you're probably gonna push away from here thinking, what? 60, 60 Hertz and it doesn't have any G-Sync or anything like that. So it's for creators only. Display colors, there's 1.07 billion colors. It's 100% sRGB and Rec. 709. Color bit is 10 bit and the Delta E is less than three in average or equal to three. You know, three to six they consider is still kind of accurate for printing purposes and things like that. So if it's three or less, in average, that is very, very, very good. So some of the other like maybe cooler features what this monitor has is that it has two speakers built in. There's a two five watt speakers built in. There is a Kensington lock on the left side and the back. The monitor is also Visa mount compatible, but only 100 times 100 millimeters. The monitor also has a proximity sensor that knows whether you're close to the monitor and if you're moving or not. And if it detects that there's no movement and you're not at the monitor, after 40 seconds, it's actually gonna switch the monitor to sleep mode and save some energy. Pretty cool pro feature. In terms of the IO and ports of this monitor, there's quite a lot going on and it's one of the best out there. There's a lot of different features. Okay, on the right side of the monitor, there are kind of two sections of, you know, ports. This one section is the display inputs, which there are two HDMI version 2.0s, one display port version 1.2, and one mini display port version 1.2. As well as that, there is also some USB options. On the right side, there is two USB 3.0 ports there is a full size sd card reader which is actually really good and i'm getting similar transfer speeds if i had a sd card reader plugged into my computer and straight so that is big bonus also headphone jack on the right side if you want to plug your headphones in straight to the monitor on the back of the monitor there are some more ports there are two usb 3.0 upstream and two USB 3.0 downstream ports, as well as audio line in or 3.5 millimeter audio input port. And last of all, there is a mini USB port in the back of the monitor, which is meant for something called hot puck, which we're gonna talk about in a moment. Now, all the reviews I've seen online and they've made the mistake calling this port micro USB, but it's not a micro USB port. It's a mini USB port in the back over there. So I don't wanna make this very technical review of this monitor. So I'm more focusing on like my usage side of the monitor. And as you can see, I'm running a three monitor setup. So I don't even wanna talk about the stand because I haven't even taken the stand out of the box. The stand is great. It can pivot, you know, up and light or left and right and tilt it this way and put it port portrait mode and up and down and it's got a handle on and it's high quality, but in my case, it's useless. And maybe you're one of those as well that you're using already a multi-monitor setup and you already have a stand on your desk, then you know this is, this is not for you. If you want to know very detailed reviews about every single feature of this and ev how this all works and every single little details, then I'm gonna leave two reviews up there and some of the things might even just be completely over your head. So, but if you want to, I'm gonna leave them up there and in the links below. So let's talk about some of my favorite features about this and why I think this is absolutely awesome monitor. First of all, let's address the resolution and the monitor colors. I didn't know I could enjoy monitor editing so much. I was editing on some old monitors and I had a three monitor setup and I thought 
I've constantly run into this problem of oh, not the right colors and all the colors of the three monitors are completely different. I don't know which one to trust, which one is the most accurate. Even if I calibrated them, they all look completely different. So I wanted something that is very high resolution and the colors look good. So as soon as I plugged this one in, I was like, oh, what's this? I'm enjoying the editing process so much more than I, than I thought. I was getting sick of editing and sick of seeing the colors, but now suddenly the colors are like popping out and I can enjoy the colors and the colors, I know they're accurate. It comes with the calibration sheet from the factory that this is how it's calibrated. This is absolutely awesome. If you're looking for a much better editing experience, then this monitor can give you this as well. But apart from that, I find it very good viewing angles. So looking at the monitor, there's hardly any any glare or any reflections or things like that, I can see even when being quite close to, which actually in my case, I think I'm a little bit too close. I, the monitor should be further away, but I can't have that. Even then I'm seeing very, very, very good colors. I can easily change different color modes if I wanted to and things like that. So that is really, really good. Because it's a 4K monitor, I can easily have my Premiere Pro, if you can see in the back over there, there's one Premiere project just running over there. I can have my like a project window or like the preview of the clip over there, as you can see over there, in the corner over there, full size, full HD kind of running over there. It's, it's not cropped or anything. It's awesome. I can fit so much in there because it's 32 inch. My timeline is long. I can see it. Things are looking, you know, everywhere. It's not too small. I like it a lot, guys, okay. So one of the other cool features about this is, is that if you're using two computers to control this monitor, then there is an option to control the two computers from the same keyboard and mouse. So let me explain. In the back of the monitor, there are two USB 3.0 upstream ports. You plug that USB cable from the monitor to your computer USB port, and then from the monitor to the other USB port of the computer and then now if you connect your keyboard and mouse to the side of the monitor or on the bottom of the monitor then you can easily change from within the monitor settings which computer you want to control with your keyboard and mouse which is pretty pretty awesome so if you're one of those people who needs that feature i think it's a cool feature to have i'm also going to leave a video over there if you want to know exactly how this feature works so you can check that out if this is not clear for you i understand that there might be some people watching this who are even more professional video editors than me and they say no i need delta e less than two and i need these golem comments and these spaces then I completely understand and there are monitors that are much more expensive that are out there for you from Asus and some of the monitors that I mentioned from the competition. So feel free to check them out. What also is really cool about this is that there is a dual view mode on the monitor, which means that you can make half of your monitor to be one color space and then one to be other. For example, one of one side can be sRGB and the other side could be Rec. 709 or CAD or whatever. So you don't actually necessarily need two monitors to have these two color spaces shown. You can just have this one monitor and then that will show you both of the color spaces over there. Now, even though this being quite an old model of a monitor, I think still here in 2020, or if you're watching this later, I think this is one of the best options available for video editing. Now I understand that this model has been renewed by this PD3220U model, but that is almost double the price for just having some extra parts, but basically having similar things underneath the hood. So I'm a big fan of this monitor and I'm very much recommending this to anyone who's looking for video or photo editing monitor that's very, very good and budget friendly, and then has a lot of features. So these have been some of the most important features for me, but there are so much more. And if you dig into the settings, there's so much more different modes and light modes and eco modes and blue light modes, dark room modes, eco modes, and things like that. You can adjust loads of different things. So that is, that is really good. So this is that little hotkey puck or whatever you want to call it. And if you're using the monitor stand, this fits exactly perfectly on the stand and there's space for the cables and everything. So it's just having it there. 
So what is this and what can you do with this? So basically this is just a little quick shortcut for you to adjust the monitor settings, okay? You can quickly dive into the menu of the monitor and change settings like that. Also there are two few presets over here, one, two, three and back button. Now these one, two, three can be configured to have like different things and do different things, which you can adjust obviously in the settings, but in the default, there are different color modes, like, you know, going sRGB and CAD or things like that. So you can quickly change that and have it closer to you on the keyboard because there's a long cable adjust, you know, that comes with it. You can have this book next to you and for example when you're on the editing program and you're editing let's put it poof, srgb right you're editing 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 and then you want to browse the web but you're editing at night and you don't want that blue light to come in you quickly change boom press 2 and then it changes to for example the the blue light mode or eco mode so everything goes nice and warm tones you can browse the web and then read up or do some research then press the button back on boom you're back in the editing software and things like that also i like how this kind of is incorporated into the design of the monitor very nice so i've said quite a lot of good things about this monitor so now let me talk about some of the things that you know you need to know and makes an honest review about this monitor now because this is a little bit older model we can see quite big bezels and quite deep bezels okay the deepness of the bezels are probably around 10 millimeters and they're probably around 15 millimeters or 20 millimeters of the bezels all around especially on the bottom the chin is quite big as well so it doesn't quite look like the most modern monitor but for me it doesn't actually that much matter because i like the performance inside but if you're looking for something super super smart and looks very you know futuristic or up to date or modern it doesn't quite look that also what i've noticed is that the monitor color of the plastic is gray it's not quite black it's gray which i think they did on purpose you know if you're editing it's perfect if you're on a like a middle gray room or like you have a room that's kind of the gray room for best color accuracy and things like that then I think that's why they made it gray instead of black so it's a little bit better for the colors but just at first when you look at them it looks a bit like why is it gray not black it looks a little bit confusing but that's why I think they did it also another thing is that because it's a pro monitor I don't quite feel that the materials used around the monitor are quite good so when i was putting the monitor on to this stand over there i had to hold it you know from the edges and from the sides and just moving the whole holding different positions and things like that and quite often i felt underneath my fingers the the side panels and thing they're moving they're not quite like you know sturdy or something that you would expect i don't know apple pro you know display which is completely another league but just for the sake of comparing materials it's not quite in there you know it's it's more like plastics in there they're moving a little bit which for me you know i'm thinking i've played quite a lot you know i, I like things to be solid but as long as as soon as i put it out there and start using it i forgot about about that and i'm not constantly going there and you know touching the materials and thinking oh why is this moving why is this moving but just when you are moving, maybe the materials aren't like the top notch of the world things. So another thing that kind of is, this is lacking is, and that's because probably it's like a bit of an older model, but it will be really good to have USB-C display port over there as well. So if you want to connect any of your Apple devices a little bit better or easier, USB-C display port would be really, really good to have, which this one doesn't have. Even though these bad sides I have mentioned, I think this is still one of the best bank for book pro editing monitors you can buy now i'd also like to mention some of the tips that i've i would also consider if i would make this purchase again i would kind of want someone to tell me these things which one of the main thing is that do you actually need 32 inch now depends how deep your table is and what your setup is but most likely or maybe you don't need that big of a display so how I'm sat, I'm probably editing around two feet or two and a half feet from the monitor. And I'm often finding that I'm moving my head like that to see the monitor from one side to the other side of the screen. And I think I'm too close to the monitor. And now thinking probably 27 inch monitor would have been much, much better. And the good thing is that BenQ actually does a 27 inch version of this. And I think you can save 100 or $200 by just going 27 inch, but having basically the same monitor. So let's sum it up. 
This is one of the best monitors you can buy if you're doing any editing or if you're a content cre creator out there. And maybe you can even go with a 27 inch. It's very color accurate, very sharp, very nice colors, very deep. Everything is super, super nice. It's definitely a pro monitor for pro users like you. If you have any other questions about this monitor, I'm happy to answer these in the comment section below. So I'm going to meet you down there. If you like this video, hit that like button. That will actually make a difference. Subscribe if you haven't already to see more content like this. Now, maybe you are struggling even with this type of budget of a monitor. So if you're wanting to get another video of even less budget for a monitor. So if you're an editor and you want to get any monitor for any type of budget, then comment below and let me know if you'd like to see that video as well. Thank you very much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Okay, if you're at this point of the video and still wondering what's happening in the background, what are these computers that you're using? So I also recommend you checking out this PC over there and this white one over here. As you can see over here, that one over there, this PC over there is what I would call the best bang for buck pro PC for video creators like you. So you might want to check it out on the channel. You're probably going to see this uh, suggested on one of the sides over here. So check it out.